Hey everyone, this is Connor with Michael Balka. We're bringing you another episode of the Who Dat Chat. We took a week off because of the Saints bye week, but we're back at it again. Mike, how you doing, man? Doing good. Happy to be back, my man. Absolutely. Big game tonight, Monday night game. We're doing this Monday morning, so we'll make sure that you check this one out tonight at 8.15. Mike, going into the uh, bye week, the Saints were 3-2, and two, you know, how do you feel about that record? Do you think that's an accurate representation of where this team's at? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with that record. You know, this, there's so much uncertainty regarding the New Orleans Saints. Uh, there's still a ton of uncertainty regarding the New Orleans Saints. You just we don't really have a true offensive identity. Like nobody kind of knows who we are. I don't really know who we are. All I know is we're just eating dubs and and losing games at the same time. We're losing games that we should win and winning games we should lose. So it's just kind of kind of the opposite of what we kind of thought it would be. But thankfully, the Saints have a tough schedule. So if we're going to keep winning games that we should lose, we should have a pretty good shot at making the playoffs this year. Absolutely. I mean, you, you couldn't have said it any better. Lose, you know, Beating the Packers by such a margin and then losing to the Giants, who at that point were winless, it's almost like two completely different teams. Um, the you know, man leading the Saints out every Sunday, Jameis Winston, you know, it's his first year really – as the guy in New Orleans, you know, what are, what are your thoughts been so far on him? Uh, I think he's been very good. Uh, a lot of people love to like hate on Jameis Winston for no reason. Um, but he's been, he's been a stud. He's got better stats than Patrick Mahomes. He's right up there with some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in terms of several different passing numbers. Um, and I think it's just going to keep getting better and better. I think, you know, he had a good week of rest. Um, I'm excited to see post by week Jameis Winston thrive again in his career following the bye week. A lot of people misinterpreted my tweet saying that this is where his stats at the bye week this year, but in his career following bye week, he's got a three and three record, uh, 64.4 completion percentage. Uh, he's got about almost 1500 passing yards, 12 touchdowns, five picks and 86 rushing yards. So he's always been very good following the bye week. Um, and I'm excited to see him ball out against Seattle tonight. It's crazy because he has not, he didn't have just a bye week, but he also had like an extra day because we don't play until tonight on Monday Night Football. Yeah. And then extra day of rest will be good against the Seahawks team that, um, in a really tough division, NFC West, they're two and four, uh, third place in their division that has, you know, San Fran and, you know, the cards who are surprisingly, I think, the front runners. What do you expect out of this Seahawks team? Uh, I don't expect them to to really stand a chance against New Orleans, if I'm being honest. You know, they're really banged up with injuries similar to the way we are, um, and they're without their their superstar quarterback in Russell Wilson. Uh, I mean, Geno Smith just isn't the same, you know, and, and you know, there's question marks regarding, you know, if Alex Collins is going to be able to play. Uh, so they're going to have to go with, like, Travis Homer out of the backfield, and that's not looking great for them. Uh there's just, yeah, they have a lot of uncertainty as well. I mean, they do have DK, Metcalf, and uh, Tyler Lockett going for them. But if you don't have a quarterback who can consistently and reliably get them the ball, I mean, what good does it do? Um, so, I mean, who knows? We could see a, a Geno Smith forthcoming, I guess, but I'm not expecting that against a lockdown Saints defense at all. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of injuries in that Seahawks team. You know, one place I'm, I'm looking at is that defense. I think if the Saints get off the mark quickly, we've seen them in, in games this season where they keep teams off the field going, you know, third down conversions are very low. And the red zone defense is great too. So if we can limit the Seahawks to, you know, field goals, I'd be very happy with that, you know, to start the first half. Yes, the Saints actually have the number one red zone defense in the NFL right now. We also have the number one red zone offense. So obviously the key to victory is to get into the red zone as well as keeping the other teams out of it. So absolutely, pre pretty, pretty excited for this game tonight because I think, you know, on paper, the Saints look like they're heavily favorited on yeah. the road. And I, I'm looking at, you know, an interesting stat here. The Seahawks have more yards per game, but – the Saints, I feel like, are one of the best teams at using the most out of what they have. And, you know, with a lot of new faces, a lot of, you know, not not necessarily household names at the receiving position, you know, they don't need to throw the ball 50 times for 500 yards. Jameis can get it done relatively simply. Yeah, and that's one of the things is our defense has kind of been putting us in really good field position as well as, 
you know, our special teams unit as well. They've just been doing a good job all season of putting us in good field position. So the better field position you start with, the less yards you're going to accumulate. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too – we don't have to go out there, and Jameis doesn't have to go out there and throw for 300 yards every single game for us to be in a good position to win. You know, this we have a genius of a head coach in Sean Payton. Um, he's going to, you know, utilize our players to the best of his ability. And, you know, those players are going to go out there and show out. Um yeah, I mean, that's just pretty much the uh, kind of the way it goes. Uh, we just we optimize our opportunities and some weeks we don't. And, you know, this could very well be another game where it's just like, well, we should beat the Seahawks, but we for some reason don't. But I I am if I had to bet 100 bucks on the game tonight, I definitely feel like I'd be a winner. Yeah, I think uh, it's one of those games that, you know, you're looking at a team, tough division. They're kind of struggling, a couple injuries, you know. Everything is there for the Saints to win. Like the last time when we talked about the Giants, you know, pretty much everything is there for the Saints to win. But they had a couple of mistakes. You know, the Giants stayed in the in that game. I think it's key to keep the Seahawks from staying in the game. They got to put up a big lead early, and that comes down to defense and special teams, as you said. Um, offensively speaking, though, who, who do you think is, or maybe even defensively speaking, who's your player, uh, you know, to watch out for this week? I'll give you one offense, one defense. On offense, I think our player of the game, every week, I, I pretty much predict it correctly. So, Yeah, you're pretty spot on. I'm pretty spot on with it. So I think this week we're going to go with Marquez Callaway. I think he's going to take advantage of some uh, mismatches in that Seattle secondary. Um, I think he's going to go out there and have a pretty good game. Um, I think James is going to look for him early and often. And uh, I think we could see James' highest, highest passing yardage total today as well. Um, for some reason, just whenever anybody goes to Seattle, in Seattle, I feel like passing yards just rack up pretty quickly. Um, I'm from Seattle, so I could say that uh, Seattle seems like a pretty easy place to throw the football, only because of the weather and all of that good stuff. It just seems like it's just the ball just comes out easier. I don't know why. It just does. So I think we could see Jameis' highest passing total. I think Marquez Callaway, we could see him get about five, five to seven catches, probably get pretty close to 100, if not over 100 receiving yards. I think he finds the end zone. Um, then on defense, I think lockdown Lattimore is going to continue his trend. Um, dude's been absolutely dominant this season. He leads the NFL and passes defended, or he did going into the bye week. Probably not now, considering he had a, one entire less game. But I know he's still up there in the top five, so – He's just gonna. He's. It's gonna be really important for him to lock down and help slow down Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. Um, I will say though, I think DK Metcalf is a bigger threat to the New Orleans Saints than Tyler Lockett is. Oh, yeah. um, so I don't. I'm not too necessarily worried about Tyler Lockett unless he's just streaming wide open. I think we're gonna see a lot more of Lattimore on DK Metcalf. I could see a very. I could see like a very Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore type game with that. I think he's just going to lock down DK all night, and I think there's going to be a little chippiness. I think there's going to be a little pushing and shoving between DK and Marshawn. Um, and I think I think Tyler Lockett might might spring open on a Debo once or twice in the game, or something along the lines of that. But you know, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't think I don't think Geno Smith is really going to get in any sort of rhythm. Um, I know Seattle is selling their tickets for hella cheap in this game, trying to get fans at the stands, in the stands, uh, try to make some noise and throw off the Saints offense. But, you know, I think there's, you know, the Saints are repped really well out in Seattle, out in the Pacific Northwest for some reason. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of Saints fans there. I think it's going to be a little surprising for those Seahawks fans. So I think the Saints are going to come out strong. I think they're going to stay hot. I think we'll actually, in all honesty, see a game very similar to the Green Bay game to start the year. I think we're going to get up early, and I think we're just going to, you know, make a couple key defensive stops right out of the bat. I think we're going to emphasize on that opportunity on offense, and I think it's just going to be a blowout from the get-go. Yeah, I, I want to say that I think, you know, this is a game we, – I, we talked about it, I believe, in the Giants vid where, you know, the Saints tried to do a few things and the timing wasn't right. You know, this is a game where – we could experiment a little bit more. I think there's a little bit more wiggle room, especially with a, a team that's not got their starting quarterback, you know, where we know who the weapon is. We know where the ball is going to go. We know where the deep threat is going to be. So, you know, the running game hasn't really been as great as it was when they had Marshawn Lynch. And, you know, we know who the receivers are. Now is the time, I think, where we can, you know, try to get a couple of mismatches, really push the tempo, get a big lead early. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I think you know we had damn near two weeks to just kind of chill, prepare for this game, and prepare for a game where Russell Wilson is not at quarterback. You know that takes out an entire additional scheme of the Seattle offense. I mean, Russell Wilson is a top two or three mobile quarterback in the NFL. I mean, if we don't, Geno Smith isn't at all. <laughs> he's just a pocket passing guy. I mean, I guess he could wiggle around if he needed to, but this he's very similar to like Jameis Winston, I guess, in that regard. Like he's going to look to pass and if he absolutely has to run, he will. Um, but yeah, I mean, that takes out an entire scheme of the Seattle offense. Right now they're very one dimensional, especially without having truly any name out of the backfield. I mean, Chris Carson's out. It's not looking like Alex Collins is going to play. So more than likely, they're going to be stuck with like Travis Homer. And I believe it's, I forgot his name, but that just goes to show that you have no idea who the Seattle running back is going to be. And they're, they're receiving back. So I guess that adds a little bit of versatility to their backfield. But still, I mean, the Saints have proven that they can lock down receiving backs. I mean, we have two outstanding speedy linebackers. I mean, Pete Werner's developing very well as well, so that's three. I'm not sure if Quan's going to play or not. I'm not sure if he got ruled out. I don't remember. I know we activated him off the IR, so I'm not sure if he's ruled out for tonight or not, but we do have Demario Davis out there still. Um, dude's an Ironman. Hasn't missed a game in his career. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think we'll also see kind of an emergence of Cam Jordan tonight. I think he's going to take advantage of the Seattle offensive line. Um, he has not done anything really this season except for run defense. And I think he's going to come out here. I think he's going to log a couple sacks tonight, kind of kind of silence some Saints fans that have been chirping at him a little bit on Twitter this week. And uh, I, we're going to see a pretty good game overall from the offense and the defense. I'm excited for tonight. Yeah, I'm excited as well. I think it's going to be a pretty good game. Um, I agree. I think Camp Jordan, you know, we it's been very quiet this season. I haven't heard much at all. And this is definitely a big game where everything's right. All the boxes have been checked and marked. We, we should go out. We should have a good game. It's just got to wait and see. Um, what is your score prediction for tonight? 38 to 3, Saints. Going up big. I'm thinking probably 31 10. Uh, definitely, you know, we're going into halftime. I think the game will probably be over maybe 21 3. Um, I, I know that that's not necessarily over, you know, with the Falcons and their 28-3 fiasco, but we're not the Falcons. We're not the Falcons. <laughs> we're, we're a real team. And, uh, you know, I, I think just looking at a team that's depleted with, you know, without Russell Wilson, no real run game, you know, I'm not super worried. Um, I was a little bit more nervous with the Giants because they had the pieces there, but there's a lot of missing players tonight for you know the Seahawks and their defenses. And it's not like it was five, 10 years ago. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, Balco, any uh, other points you want to make on this game? I, I know that there's been a few things we've, we've been gone since the bye week So um, there's been some cool things that have happened. If you haven't checked out Michael Balco show, make sure you do that. Uh, not in anything too crazy. I mean, Saints coming into this game are in an all-time uh, tie with the Seattle Seahawks on the all-time record, 8-8 eight and eight and 16 total games played between the Saints and Seahawks. So there's a tiebreaker game tonight. Um, yeah, other than that, I think I think the Saints look really good on paper. I think the Seahawks, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Pete Carroll, I think, you know, I would absolutely rule out any chance of them winning tonight. But at the same time, you you absolutely never know. It could be a very, it could very well be a New York Giants situation. But the only thing I did like about the Giants is the fact that they had talent on their offense. Still, it's just they were a talented team with that just hasn't been good in years past. The Seahawks are a team that has been good in years past, but you know due to injuries to like Russell Wilson and other big names in their backfield, it's just. I'm just ruling out pretty much from the get-go any chance of the uh, Seattle Seahawks winning. Mark my words. Like, I'll, I'll put anything on it. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what should I do if the, if the Seahawks knock off the Saints? What do I do? Do I do I wear, like, a Seahawks hat next next show or something? Or what's the what's the wager here? Uh, that's a good that's a good one. Why don't we put that in the comments below? Let us know what Mike should do if the Seahawks win. Um I, I'll think of something as well. I think Walt's probably got a good idea about that. Shout out to Alec Walt. If you haven't checked out his videos on Down the Block Sports, make sure you do that as well. 
Uh, Mike, I, I pleasure you know having you back on. I know we were gone with the bye week. Where can our uh, viewers check you out? Check me out on Twitter at Michael Balco Jr. Got that nice little blue check waiting on Connors, though. It's okay, though. We'll get there. One day, one day. Um, if you haven't checked out that show, make sure you do that. If you haven't subscribed to Down the Block Sports, make sure you do that as well. It's not just our content. We got Walt, who's got some great videos and a lot of really cool things coming out in the near future. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Smack that notification bell so you never miss out. Give and us we'll a thousand. A Give thousand. Us a thousand. We want if a we, thousand. If we get a thousand views, I'm shouting out every single comment on Twitter. Hell yeah. You can be featured on a verified Twitter. That's big news. Um, everyone, appreciate you so much. Thanks for checking us out. We'll see you next time. Let's go, Saints. Who that chat? Trying to eat some dubs tonight, baby. Eat them. I'll see you around, everyone.